Good morning, leaders. I hope you are doing well. I hope things are going well with you. Uh, I was uh, uh, I was scheduled for an interview uh, for a supervision session uh, with coaches. It so happened to end much quicker uh, than it was supposed to, which is good for me because um, I could do one of two things. I could sit and watch TV, which I don't do quite often. I don't get enough time. Or I could do what I actually wanted to do all along because I've been, I think it's been a while since I've actually recorded anything or shared anything in terms of thoughts. So this morning I had a, a session with a, a Breakfast Club Africa, which is a combination or a collection uh, of um, leaders, uh, senior leaders, executives, CEOs, particularly managing directors, as well as uh, chief entrepreneurs of organizations. Um, and we were having a conversation and I think the topic was for me quite, uh, uh, quite key. And I thought as I was like sitting, listening to everybody talk, I thought it would uh, be great um, to share a little bit of also uh, my thoughts and then make, a, make, make also then uh, create an, an opportunity for you to share your own uh, with regard to uh, the topic. And this topic is, um, what lessons have you learned? I mean, it's uh, the 22nd of October uh, for many people, particularly in this part of the world. And I know that in November, half of November is work, is work month. Half of November is planning month for the whole of December where people are going on holiday uh, to different parts of the country. So technically you have about 15 or so days, maybe 20 uh, days uh, to do a lot of the things that you need to do from a work perspective with clients, right? So I thought for me, I would take this opportunity then to kind of reflect a little bit uh, on 2020 so far and the lessons I didn't think I would learn but I have learned. I think the first lesson that actually come, came to mind as I was like listening to everyone uh, for myself was kindness gets results in the long term. Kindness generally comes across as something that is um, um, weak. And many times as a leader, as leaders, we are socialized to be harsh and hard and probably focus on the results and get things done and all of those uh, very masculine energy type stuff. What it does obviously is it gets things done and we get the results. However, what I find that we miss out on in the long term is relationships and the extension of relationships and gentleness. And I think for many people though that have spent time um, nurturing relationships, like the number of the relationships I nurtured, they kept me uh, really much alive in a very difficult year, probably a year like we hopefully never experience again. Um, and I found myself having to leverage on the kindness of strangers, the kindness of my clients, the kindness of family, uh, and extend kindness as well. And which I suppose in a sense, uh, if, 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 if that's what uh, one was doing it for, it would also have created a, um, an opportunity uh, for you to extend the relationships. I found that one of the things that I would do uh, is uh, give people a little bit of discount, uh, uh, go a little bit of a mile, extra mile for a client, for family. I, I shared a little bit because uh, I'm not the kind of guy that you would ask for money and I would give you, I love my money. <laughs> so I only give my money to people that I can afford to visit to uh, uh, tech, uh, technically. So in a sense, I found that kindness actually has a value in the long term. And I encourage you to really invest in being kind and gentle. It doesn't really cost too much. 
Um, and if you feel the need to be firm and to be clear and to be direct with people, still do it with consideration, but get your point across. The second thing that, the second lesson I've learned in 2020 um, talks really about government. I think I've said this before in some of my other reflections um, that I've learned that my government can implement much faster than they currently are. And this also gave me an, an idea that either one, um, they didn't know how much capability is lying within the system or they did and did not have will. So, but my conclusion, which could be complete and, and incorrect, but it's my, my learning, because that's essentially what, we are, what we're talking about here, is that will, in my opinion, will is a problem, not capability. I think there are a lot of very smart people and some of whom I've worked with as I was coach, as I have been coaching and teaching as well as uh, consulting to government. Um, there's a lot of people that are really doing their jobs and are ready to do their work, but they are frustrated by a lot of the, by a lot of the people that spend a lot of time uh, working around what they need to be doing instead of doing what needs to be done. Honestly, I think many times in, in, in government, people get distracted by politics of power uh, as well as, uh, uh, yeah, power and authority and moving around the chairs, effectively trying to show who's boss, which is not really helping anyone. And my appeal already, as I think about this, to anybody who's a leader in government is to consider what kind of environment are you creating as a leader that will enable people to implement? What is it that you're learning from the COVID-19 situation about the level of capability that you have within your system that you can use to implement on behalf of the citizens? I swear, if there's one thing that we need to have learned, all of us from from COVID-19 is two things. One, uh, we need to continuously across the continent, across the world, but, but for me, because I live on this continent of Africa, is to make sure that we create health infrastructure so that people are able to afford health, are able to access health. The second one, make sure that people learn or create a space where people can be able to afford their lives. We're not necessarily trying to create rich people, but I think all of us, it's our work to um, get rid of uh, poverty and get rid of unemployment and make sure that people are able to afford their lives without taking away their agency. The third thing uh, and the last thing in terms of the lessons I've learned, um, comes from my own personal experience from the start of the COVID-19 um, to where I'm sitting. I mean, I'm feeling really great this week. Last week was probably not so much and uh, probably a week before it was okay. But the other week it was great. So it's just been a really bit of a roller coaster in terms of emotions, but I suffered at some point from uh, anxiety, I think right at the beginning of the COVID-19, I got anxiety attacks, um, which I haven't had in about 10 years, which, which goes to show you how attached uh, I have been to this situation, even as I was trying to rationalize it. So the rational mind is not necessarily a solution to emotional problems. That's what I'm, that's one thing I want to say is that sometimes when you're feeling those emotions, when you're feeling anger, exci excitement, joy, anxiety, uh, and, and sadness, and all of those emotions, feel the emotions. Don't rationalize them. Don't try to explain them. Don't take time yet to, to understand. Just sit with them and feel them. 
However, as you're feeling them, make sure that you're paying attention not to go too far down. Um, but I think usually when you allow it and you don't resist it, what happens is you become more human, you become more humane, and you become more open to being helped and asking for help and then being able to get out of it, right? So in all of that emotional uh, anxiety and energy, I found that one thing that was healing all the time was a sense of gratitude. I know uh, many times, whenever one would hear these kinds of stuff, uh, you talk to motivational speakers, you talk to coaches, and they would tell you, stay, stay gratitude, develop a, an, attitude, an attitude of gratitude. I got this one from Dr. DiMartini when I met him a couple of years ago. And yeah, I, I loved it. But in a sense, I kind of was also rolling my eyes a little bit, like, ah, attitude of gratitude, you know, uh, because it felt like a motherhood statement of sorts. But I can tell you for a fact that it really works on the brain. It works as a result then on the body. And as soon as you get out of bed and you put your feet on the floor and I would say, thank you. I would walk down the passageway to come to the kitchen to come and make something to drink. I would notice that I would pay attention to the idea that yes, there are things that in my mind could be wrong, are wrong. I can't get out of the house, I'm in lockdown. Uh, oh my God, what am I gonna do for money? Uh, if the lines decide, you know, all of those things that so many of us were thinking about in March at the beginning of the, at the, beginning of the, of the, of the uh, pandemic. Um, I realized that all of those are in your mind. They're not necessarily happening at that moment. And even if they are, how you then respond to them becomes more key than the, the events themselves. And connecting back to gratitude, to, to kindness, I decided to extend the process, have a supervision session uh, for coaches, having experienced exactly that. I created two hours every, every week for people to just come through, no money to pay, just so that we could connect. I get, I get healed because I'm doing something for someone else. But at the same time, uh, people get healed and then more or less we have a collective sense of healing with regard to many people that are our colleagues, many people who are our um, fellow citizens in this um, situation. So that's it, that's, that's about it. Just to summarize then, um, my lessons for 2020 um, that I've learned from COVID-19, kindness gets results in the long term. Government can implement very fast if they really want to. Will seems to be a problem, not capability. Gratitude is the default state and it heals. Say thank you. And the more you say thank you, the more things you find to say thank you about. And that's it. So what is it that is, that? what are your three lessons um, that COVID-19 has taught you? So share them uh, below and um, let's share and see uh, what, what, what comes out of this. I'm grateful that you managed to watch as long as I did. I wasn't really timing it. I just wanted to share because I have the time and I felt it might be useful. I hope it is. Wishing you a great evening and uh, see you again soon. Ciao.